Hollow Earth Part 24. Now to add to this confusion, in 1956, the editor of Flying Saucer magazine, right there, Ray Palmer, he wrote a detailed story on Bird and his discoveries. Apparently, however, as the issue headed to press, they mysteriously disappeared, and strangely, the printing plates were found badly damaged. So a reprint could not be made. Some other interesting, indisputable facts about the time were that, up to this point, there have been a few books published about the North Pole having entrances into the Earth. Another thing was that Bird was accused of lying in an effort to receive credit for being the first person to the North Pole, an accusation that seemed completely inconsistent with the man of his character. Another thing Bird said is that the poles are actually concave instead of convex as thought, and that the South Pole is 10,000 feet high, whereas the North Pole is 10,000 feet low. It was also well documented that there was a large spike in temperature as he approached the poles. If you thought this series was good now, just wait. One of the biggest mysteries involving Bird happened right after World War II with Operation High Jump. Hello Earth Part 25. I'm reading straight off the paper for this. While it was said at the time it was an expedition to Antarctica to find coal and other resources, but that story later changed to training military personnel and establishing a research base. But in the meantime, you can't help but wonder why either mission would require 33 aircraft, 13 Navy ships, and almost 5,000 soldiers and mysteriously result in loss of lives. Come on. Weeks later, it was revealed that their mission was to retrieve missing Nazi leaders from their refuge in Antarctica. But Bird cut the eight-month mission short after the Chilean press reported troubles with many fatalities. Though the event was clearly downplayed in the U.S. following a military-aided evacuation, the force returned. Their stories became classified as top secret immediately. But these inevitable leaks basically show that there were attacks by highly advanced saucer-shaped airships. You can see them both there in these photos. I'm kind of scared if these are real pictures. Not gonna lie. Hollow Earth Part 26. So the Secretary of Defense at the time, James Forrestal, started the talk and President Truman forced him to resign. Here's him and Truman. Then he was taken to Bethesda's Naval Hospital psychiatric ward where he was prevented from seeing or talking to anyone, including his own wife. Now, when this high-ranking man was just found dead, of course it was ruled as a suicide, case closed. Just saying, if I ever turn up dead and it's labeled a suicide, I'm not suicidal at all, so that's a lie. Another strange thing is in 1947, following the sudden end of his military expedition, Bird spoke with a reporter for the Chilean newspaper, El Mercurio, and he basically told them that he didn't want to frighten anyone, but in the bitter reality that in a case of a new war, the continental U.S. would be attacked by flying objects which could fly from pole to pole at incredible speeds. And this is where his diary comes in. After Bird's death, his son published the entire diary. Hollow Earth Part 27. The journal actually revealed a very different account than what the public had been told. It started like this, I'll let you pause to read it. It unveiled a picture that we had not imagined would be in this diary. He said he traveled 1700 miles on this journey, and he was surprised when ice below gave way to lush green forests, lakes, rivers, and mountains. He saw animal life, and he even claims to have seen a mammoth. He noted how everything had kind of unique and unbelievable color, and suddenly he realized that there were some kind of space vehicles flying beside him. He says they escorted him and he saw an entire city and was safely landed despite the fact that he had no control over his plane. Once there, he was graciously greeted by civilians and they called this place Agartha. Now, Bird's disbelief upon arrival is pretty clear. Them, him, and his crew were taken to see who they called the ruler of Agartha. The master, whom he describes as delicate and ancient, and they were told that they had been allowed to enter despite these invisible barriers because of his high moral and ethical character. Hollow Earth Part 28 the ruler then explained that ever since the U.S. had dropped atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, that the race had been very concerned for human safety and the survival of the planet. But when they intervened, however, their craft had been attacked by our military, and Bird was asked to share this message in warning to civilization. The host then guided them to their plane and took them back to the outer world. In closing, Bird said that he breathed the Pentagon of his message from the Master. He was also interviewed intently by top security forces and a medical team in order to remain silent in regard to all that he learned on behalf of humanity. Incredible was all he could call it. He later concluded, I am reminded that I am a military man and I must obey orders. Ten years later, he wrote a final entry. This is it. Pause to read. Needless to say, this is an extraordinary story from an extraordinary man. Would Bird's own son publish fake information that would defame his beloved father? Or did Bird himself falsify this story to make a cruel joke of his life and legacy? Hollow Earth Part 29 Whether or not you believe this story, his influence, moral stature, and valor could hardly be argued. That's enough about Bird, let's move on for now. The esoteric Tibetan teacher, Joal Kool, or DK, during life channeled information from his location in Tibet to Alice Bailey over in the United States, whom he later met personally. 
It's said that even after his death, Bailey still continued to receive information from the enlightened spiritual teacher called the Messenger of the Masters, committed to world service and healing of humanity. DK confirmed that Bird did indeed go to inner earth as he claimed he did. He said there's a sun there, but it's not like our sun. He said that the Aurora Borealis was not caused by this, but a different light source, and that the openings of the poles were very wide and that ships and planes could fly into them, however they'd get unknown energy fields that would camouflage it and naturally protect it. He confirmed there were entrances to Inner Earth in Egypt, Tibet, the Yucatan, as well as the Bermuda Triangle, the Soviet Union, and Africa. Hollow Earth Part 30. He said there were other races in Inner Earth just like on the surface, and some of them quite tall. He also confirmed that the U.S. government and other countries are aware of the inner Earth and are covering up the fact, as well as UFOs and other extraterrestrials. Another man, Dallas Thompson, who appeared on the Coast to Coast radio, he was a personal trainer in California, who during an out-of-body death experience said he had revelations of inner Earth, and after his recovery, he became an avid researcher, continuing to find and travel the hole that Bird said he entered at the North Pole. In 2003, after months of planning, however, he mysteriously disappeared. I mean, like, what? Finally, the most notable whistleblower from the Secret Space Program, Corey Good. He's given consistent and extensive details on Inner Earth. Among his claims are that there is a huge population currently living in Antarctica, that the United States is not the only nation that's created underground bases that are inhabited by thousands of people as well. Hollow Earth Part 31. So Corey Good claims that the U.S. is not the only nation that has underground bases in the Antarctic that are filled with people. Corey Good also shared that the Mayans were not defeated, but in fact retreated to Inner Earth, and that they also have craft, which appear to be rock, but they look more like cigars. Kind of looks like a cigar. Cylindrical in shape, just like that. Now, I don't personally think this is a spaceship. It just looks like a meteor to me. But I guess Good's description of the Minecraft isn't unlike this one, which entered our solar system from a distant galaxy not too long ago. And weirdly, it's been recorded speeding up. He also notes that many people are channeling what they believe to be Pleiadians, but they're in fact inner Earth beings that are protecting their location by claiming to be off the planet. Good also said that the disclosure would be an Earth-shattering event, but a necessary one. He wants everyone to see the Earth as a material living thing, inviting us to seek a deeper relationship with our planet. In our drive for power, resources, and control, we become disconnected and impartial to the effects our choices have on the balance of nature.